moving right along, hopefully. Cross our fingers and hope and pray. And uh, then, yeah, it's time to get on with the show and see what's going on here. So how are you this evening? We'll start with you first. Well, uh, things are better now. Uh, we were just, I was just told that there was no audio in the brief intro there. Uh, I had oh. that voice meter unlicensed and license itself issue again before the show oh. and forgot to check. Cause every time that happens, OBS screws me and loses the output I go to OBS with. But anyway, we got it now. It's fine. It's good. What are you going to do? Um, I, I've already said enough. So, you know, life is good. Back over to you, Amy. Thank you very much. I'm going to get right around this room and see who else is here with us tonight. First up, we've got Loki Fish Mars. Loki Fish, how are you this evening? Doing good, doing good. Happy to be here on another Friday with all my friends. Excellent, excellent. That's awesome. <laughs> and next up, we have DKG. DKG, how are you? Yeah, it's, it's nice. It's nice to be here. So, like he says, uh, he's uh, we're here with all our friends. Um, I'm here too, so uh, that's good. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, to, I'm looking forward to. I've got my booster next Tuesday. Looking forward to that. Excellent. Um, I'm hoping for one from the uh, Falcon Heavy, please. <laughs> there you go. Mine is on the twenty first, so let's cross our fingers and hopefully it's not a snowy day that day. <laughs> yeah, we'll be able, we'll be able to talk to each other without the internet anymore. Exactly. <laughs> That's right. And next up, we have the the team of Mike and Linda Bertelson. Welcome back. It's so good to see you both. Hello. Good evening, everybody. Um, good evening. Been away for a while. Good to be back. And uh, this is going to be an interesting evening. It is. It's going to be an interesting evening. And it, welcome back. We're so glad to have you back with us. Damn Hello, right. everyone. Just want to Hi. say hello. <laughs> Hi, Miss Linda. It's good to see you. Good to see you too. Thank good you. Good to be back. Yes. Great to have you back too. This is awesome. <laughs> and next up, we have Sarcastic Barman. Barman, how are you this evening? Hello. I'm doing well. Not enough hours in a day to do anything, but that is right. life. <laughs> yes. So it's like I've not even had a chance to do a video this week. There's no time. Just, oh. But never mind. Can't complain other than that. It's not snowing. The warm's yes. a little bit. And there's only like 15, well, 14 days left now till Christmas. It's like the hell. Then I get I presents. Know. Yay. So that's all I'm looking forward to. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> awesome. It's coming up so quick. I know. It's, it's around oh, the corner, isn't it? Oh, yes, it's terrible. <laughs> and next up, we have Purple Rhymes with Orange. Purple, how are you? Um doing okay surprisingly awake i have been streaming online virtually non-stop since 10 o'clock last night wow wow <laughs> that's a long time that yeah i only took time. about a half an hour out <laughs> <laughs> wow so you, you're going to be tired later on it's going to hit you eventually i think <laughs> well maybe it'll finally let me sleep through the night for once <laughs> There you go. Get a good night's sleep. That'll help a lot. So there we go. <laughs> Thank you. And next up, we have Mippet69. Mippet, how are you? I am doing really well. Thank you. I spent the day with my little baby new grandson and my twin grandchildren. <laughs> They're a little <laughs> bit uh, crazy as six-year-olds yeah. are, but mm -hmm. it was their last day of school yesterday. Um, so they're off for six weeks. So, <laughs> yay, <laughs> wow. it's going to be great. Yeah. <laughs> no, Baby uh, kangaroos looking, are so cute. Looking forward to yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. I know. Oh, yeah, he gets put in the pouch. Don't you worry. <laughs> <laughs> That's no, awesome. So, yeah, everything's cool down this way. Excellent. Excellent. Good. Glad to hear it. And last but not least, we do have M2M tonight. He And we're going to let him take it away. Hello, Matt. How are you? Hi, uh, Amy. Thanks so much. I'm <clears throat> uh, a little bit anxious, um, as I'm, I'll explain just in, in just a little while. Uh, things are not particularly great just at the moment in uh, my part of the world, and I'll, go, I'll get into a little bit as to why I want to uh, talk about this in just a second. So, um, I mean, the last time I talked about this, it was about somebody 
uh, dying of COVID in the flat earth community. Um, this mm-hmm. time it's, it's not about anyone in the flat earth community. It's about actually somebody that's uh, uh, closer to me than that. Yeah. Um, so I'll explain. In the early hours of Thursday morning, um, my ex-wife was taken into hospital via ambulance um, with suspected COVID. Um, and her oxygen levels were quite low um, and she had a high temperature. She was awake, um, a little bit incoherent and slightly confused, um, as I understand. I, I wasn't there myself. Um, uh, anyway, after getting to hospital, um, she was confirmed as COVID positive. Um, they took some x-rays of her chest and the x-rays showed very clear signs of uh, pneumonia uh, and quite bad um, from what, as we understand it. Um, while she was there, she deteriorated pretty quickly. Um, the long and the short of it is that uh, now she's been intubated. Um, and for those that don't know what intubated is, it basically means that she's been put to sleep uh, with drugs. It's kind of like a, a, in a state of coma, I guess, um, and put on a ventilator uh, to breathe for her. And she's now in... Uh, ICU intensive care unit in my local hospital, Craig Avenue Area Hospital. Um, the consultant uh, told us that she um, has a very bad infection um, um, and she's probably the worst um, on the ICU ward uh, currently. Um, and he basically said that we should expect the worst. Um, but they're doing everything they can for her. Um, the way she was, he was talking is that he, they don't really hold much hope. Um, now, my ex-wife is the mother of, uh, I've got two children, um, a son 11 years of age. Um, my daughter is 15. Uh, up to that point, um, all my children knew that she'd gone into hospital and I think she just, they just assumed she was going to be uh, a few days you know, in, in hospital for a few days after some treatment. It's not the first time she's gone into hospital for different things. And, you know, she's come out and she's been fine for, you know, various things that she's been in hospital for. She's she's not the healthiest of people. She's got some conditions and things which complicates things. Um, but I felt that I had to tell at least my 15-year-old daughter um, because I felt, felt that she was old enough to really fully understand or at least partially understand um what was going on, uh, some of it anyway. So um, I had to tell her that she was very seriously ill um, and on life support. Um, now, I did this on a, um, a video call, by the way. Um, she, they're being looked after by um, my ex-wife's current partner at the moment, as it stands at the moment anyway. Um, she she naturally, she broke, broke down in front of me. Um, uh, my precious daughter tearing her heart out for her mother uh, it just ripped my heart apart completely. I just felt uh, helpless at the time. Um, after I hung up the uh, video call, um, you know, I broke down myself. Um, I didn't actually tell her what the consultant had said to expect the worst. Um, when I say the worst, we're talking that she she may well die. Um, anyway, we talked a little bit more. Um, we talked about the ventilator she had been put on, um, and she calmed down a bit and managed to rationalise and correctly rationalise actually that the machine was giving um, her lungs a rest um, to help her body fight the infection, which um, for somebody that age um, to to really sort of understand that I think is 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 really good. Um, so she managed to that kind of calm her down a little bit. Um, now I haven't told my 11 year old son, um, how sick his mother is. Um, and we think it's best to keep it that way, uh, at least for the, for the time being. Um, now this has put me in a position where, um, I'm having to prepare myself for the very real possibility of telling both my daughter and my son, that the mother isn't coming home and that she's died. I mean, how do you do that? How do you tell children of that age that they're not going to see their mother anymore? How, how do you do that? Uh, I've absolutely no idea I, how I'm going to do that. And it's quite possible that I could be doing that in, these, in the coming days or weeks. 
Now, here's the crux of it. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Joy, my ex-wife, uh, isn't vaccinated. Why? Um, well, my ex-wife has a history um, of uh, blood clots. And when the uh, vaccine first came out, the only one that was available was the AstraZeneca vaccine at the time. There's more available now, um, at least where we live here at the moment. Um, and some of you might know the AstraZeneca uh, vaccine carried a small risk of, uh, of, of clots um, and an increased risk of those that have, have a history of clots. Um, but recently she, she actually heard that they had resolved the issues. I mean, I haven't looked into that myself or not. I don't know whether that's true. Um, and she was actually just two weeks ago telling my daughter that she was thinking of actually getting the vaccine the following week, which is the week she started to become ill. So obviously she couldn't while she was ill. Not only that, her current partner, um, who is looking after my children, um, they, they know him quite well. We trust him and they've, they've known him for quite a long time now. Um, now, I would refer to him uh, as a soft anti-vaxxer. Um, I mean, he's not completely against it, but he's very sceptical and he didn't want to take the vaccine because he believed he, he, didn't, he, he didn't know anybody that had been affected um, by COVID enough to warrant risking getting a vaccine, his words. Um, so there was a certain amount of influence from him as well over her not getting the vaccine as well on top of that. Now, I, I don't blame her current partner, um, mostly for two reasons. I think first off, my ex-wife is an adult um, and she's old enough um, and wise enough, you'd think, to make her own decisions. Um, so it was her decision. Uh, and secondly, I just think um, he's a victim of misinformation. In fact, both of them really are victims of misinformation. Um, and he was particularly influenced by hardcore anti-vaxxers that um, reside in his uh, circle of friends. Really, so that's that's really the reasons I don't I don't blame him at all for that. Um, so now, because um, of her decision of not getting a vaccine, she's essentially dying of COVID infection um i don't think the doctors hold a whole lot of hope really for her um and my children um probably will lose their mother in the coming days or weeks <sighs> so here's really what the message i want to put across to all of you to everybody i'm gonna beg you i'm gonna appeal to you i'm going to appeal to your um sense of responsibility i'm going to appeal to your sense of humanity if you like i'm going to appeal to your sense of love for your family and friends so please if you're religious for the love of god if not for the love of your fellow man or for the love of your family and friends and anyone that you love or anyone that loves you please if you haven't already please, I beg you, get the vaccine. If you've been double vaccinated and you qualify, please get the booster. I mean, I, I'm I'm in pieces at the moment in my mind because I, I as I said, I have to th think and be prepared as to how I'm going to tell my two children, my 15-year-old daughter, my 11-year-old son, that their mother isn't here anymore. I'm facing that kind of reality at the moment. Um, and really, if it, um, when my ex-wife passes away or if she passes away, um, I'm the only thing they've got left. I'm the only one I've got left. I mean, no child at those ages should have to lose their mother or their father, in fact. Children need their mothers. They need their fathers. I mean, no child of that age should have to go to a funeral of the mother and say goodbye forever. They shouldn't have to do that. Not that age. Maybe later on in life it happens, you know, but not that not at that age. And it's so preventable. Now, we can't keep locking down because of COVID because as we all know, it's crippling the economy. Um, I think everybody agrees with that, no matter what your position is. 
um, that's just going to result in more unemployment, more poverty, and, and you know, and therefore more deaths um, and things like that. It, all kinds of problems. Now, it is true, and it's I know it's something we're going to talk about later on um, in the show. Vaccines will not guarantee stopping you from getting COVID. That's very clear, and nobody's ever made the claim that it, it's it's one hundred percent foolproof. It just, just isn't. But what it does do, it will limit the infection enough if you do contract COVID to making you just feel like crap for a week or so and will, and most likely will keep you out of hospital. And that's particularly important for people with medical conditions. Now, any medical person will tell you that. Um, prime example, I, I, I said this a few weeks ago, was um, when I um, contracted COVID, um, I have a heart condition. Unfortunately, my heart uh, function reduced a bit back to what it was some years ago. Um, and it's, it's in hand now. Um, when I saw my cardiac consultant, when she asked me um, if I'd been vaccinated, um, and I said I had, and this is before I even got the VUCI, she told me that if I hadn't, um, due to, to my current condition of my heart, um, probably um, stopped me from being very seriously ill um, or even dying. So really it just proves what I'm saying. So please don't don't put anyone in the position that I'm in now having to prepare to tell their children that their mother um, is, is, is dead. Get a vaccine and please get as many people as you can that you know to get the vaccine or get the booster. Please, I beg you, don't, don't allow something like this to happen to other people. Please just put your beliefs aside. All these speaking of freedoms and things like that, just put that aside for the benefit of people like me and my two young children and, and lots of other people like me that are in the same position. Don't let children grow up without their parents because of a vague belief or a principle. You know, put your principles aside for, for, for this kind of thing. You just have to. Listen to those that are in the know. Not some person on YouTube with no medical experience or qualification or some Facebook meme. Please, just listen to people that know. I beg you, please, you have to get vaccinated. This is the only way we're going to fight this because we're going to have to live actually with COVID for quite a number of years yet. There's different variants that keep coming out. We can't keep locking down, so this is the only real solution. Apart from wearing a face mask, social distancing, again, these are not guarantees, but these things will help. And it's the only way we're going to get rid, finally get rid of this horrible virus, this horrible virus that can tear families apart. Now, I just want to finish with one thing. Can I ask that if there's any content creators watching this or listening to this, could you please, please just clip this appeal and publish it on your channel? I mean, words, words really fail me how I'm feeling right now. And uh, I, I, and if we can just get one person vaccinated that has doubts about the vaccine as a result of, of watching this, then, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a massive victory. But we, we just need to get as many people as possible to, to get vaccinated. This is the only solution. This is the only way. So uh, that's, that's really what I want to say. Thank you. I appreciate the uh, opportunity for, for saying that. Thank you. Good stuff, Matt. Good stuff. I really, Thank really, you, really hope this works out for you and you don't have to have that conversation with the kids. I don't know how I would do that. I just don't. I don't. Yeah. And um, so I, there's going to be a lot of chit chatter from everybody on the panel for sure. So yes. uh, let's use our hands up because we're going to have to get around properly here. Um, Absolutely. There's when if, if you do a search on YouTube and uh, you do COVID hospital, it's just post after post after post, uh, news stories, people, and so on and so forth. It's, I, I, I wish there was some fun to like, you know, advertising agencies are so good at manipulating people into doing things they might not do through advertisements. Can't you do this for vaccines? You fuckers. Uh, Mike, Mike Bertelson. 
Yeah, I just wanted to point out that there are some really, really good stats right now on uh, on this. In, in where I live in Connecticut, currently the people that are in hospitals for COVID nineteen, seventy four percent of them are unvaccinated, and those that are fully vaccinated and that are in the hospital represent approximately one percent of the people in our state that are that are vaccinated the vaccine works it works very very well and the numbers bear that out yes uh, you, you have actually a it, it, the way the numbers are working out now a 33 fold time uh uh probability of dying from covid if you're unvaccinated 33 times greater that's phenomenal that is just huge. Yeah. I mean, if if you want an idea on how huge that is, uh, imagine you won $100,000 at the lottery. Now, times it by 33. How you doing? Right? <laughs> Amy. Yeah, I just wanted to let everyone know, too, that YouTube is actually does have a good resource here, which is really surprising. Um, right underneath this video that you're watching right now, there's a link that says go to get the latest information from the CDC about COVID-19. And also there is another link there. If you have any questions, you can start there. there you, you can click the link that says see more resources on Google. So definitely do that. Just go ahead and and check those links out. And another thing I will say is go talk to your doctor. They'll have the best information for you as well because they know you and they have your history. They'll be able to tell you what's best for you. So I just wanted to address that as well. And also let's not bait people tonight, just for tonight, okay? Thank you. We'll have the debate next week. So, so there we go, okay? Thank yeah, you so that much. That was on uh, Andrea or Andrea. I'm not sure which way that goes, yeah. but um, yeah, that was a good show. Yep. You know, I called it out when it came by too, for sure. Um, Me too. Yeah. You know, that was a good one. This is one of those topics. This is, this is, I mean, if somebody is set in their belief and they absolutely believe it, they don't see anything wrong with what they're saying. And so you don't want to be in a position where, you know, somebody who's usually pretty cool in our chat is all of a sudden everybody wants hands around throats and stuff. Best to avoid it. Um, DKG. Yeah. Um, first of all, Matt. I'm sorry. It's okay. Don't, don't get upset. No, because the thing is, you know, I was very young when uh, my mother died, and uh, yeah, it's, it's 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 very very tough. Um, I mean, I'm not not as young as those your kids, but um, bloody hell, it's it's a it's a tough one to deal with. And uh, the, the, the sad thing is, is how many other people are like you in the same boat? Because yeah. of this, it's, it's, it's fucking ridiculous. Uh, the, the other thing I just wanted to say that, you know, Amy was pointing out some good uh, sources, you know, to read up stuff. Um, if you want just if you want to go to YouTube and just find uh, um, an independent source, there's a uh, channel by uh, Dr. John Campbell, who does basically a daily uh, report on on COVID and uh, what's going on in the world. Um He's very honest. He's very pragmatic. Uh, he doesn't dabble with the conspiracies, but he acknowledges them, and he will, you know, he will dip into uh, those sort of like areas, you know, uh, if he feels a requirement. But he's a, a very, very pragmatic man, and he's worth listening to. Um, but you know, that's if you want to listen to um, the, the miseries of COVID half an hour every day, uh, which is, you know. <laughs> It's not the most exciting thing to listen to, I must admit. But, uh, you know, if you all want information, you can try him. That's it. That's what I wanted to say at the minute. At the minute, we'll, we'll, we'll get back. We'll get back. Mm. Anybody on the panel had any similar personal experiences with, uh, you know, COVID in this kind of way? Uh, Amy. 
Uh, yes, I have. <laughs> um, I lost a family Indeed. member a couple weeks ago, um, as everyone well knows. I've talked about it before. I've talked about it in Gems as well. Um, I lost that family member. They were very, they were ill to begin with, but the person that came to care for them, we learned about this later on, was some of the people that were working there at the time were not vaccinated, and some of them weren't wearing masks, and he caught COVID and he got very sick very quickly and he obviously didn't make it. He passed away this, this November and it wasn't an easy thing to have to deal with, but yes. And it was COVID. It was nothing else. They, you know, the complications of COVID caused his death because people get vaccinated place. Just talk to your doctor about it. They'll be able to steer you in the right direction. And none of this, it's its not a hoax. Stop with that. You know, be careful with what information you're consuming. It's, there's so much misinformation out there that, and we've had shows about this before. It's very easy to fall for it. No one is immune to it. But slow down, take your time, and look into the information that you're receiving. Facebook and YouTube really aren't the places to get your primary sources of information. I'm sorry, they're just not. Dig deeper, do your research, look into things, find their sources, find those sources sources. Please, for the love of God, do that for for Matt, for me, for everyone else who has, you know, who has had this horrible thing. And just do that, please. And Matt wanted in too as well, please. Yeah, it's um, it's just something that I've I've said um, before about uh, you know, and I mentioned just a little while ago was uh, about principle. You know, about principles. I've seen more and more people not wanting to wear masks or uh, because they feel they're being told to by the government, or they're not wanting to social distance because they're being told to by the government. So they're doing it out of principle, and I think more and more people are becoming anti-vaxxers mostly for that reason. Um, people that were never anti-vaxxers before uh, the pandemic started and before the vaccines came out. But my argument is, what better principle is there than than protecting lives, protecting you know children from losing their mothers or children from losing their fathers or you know the people that they love? I mean, what higher principle could there possibly be? You know, um, political principles don't matter when you're dealing with people's lives. You know, that, that's that, that's one thing I actually meant to say, really, and what I wanted to talk about. Um, so that's why I want to encourage people is, look, look, just just put that down for the time being. You know, just think about what you're doing. And exactly what Amy just says, you know, d go to the right places for your sources of information. YouTube and Facebook isn't going to cut it. Um, you need to speak to the people that know what they're talking about. People that are qualified, um, medical, medically qualified people, or virologists, or laboratory assistants, or scientists, uh, doctors, nurses. Those, those kinds of people know what they're talking about because they're dealing with this day in and day out. They see the the effects of this this virus. Um, you know, so yeah, just just have a better sense of of, of a of a better principle than than just a prince a political principle because you're being told what to do by a government you know that's that's really pretty much just what i wanted to say about that exactly and linda needed in two as well please okay um i've been dealing with this from the beginning i work in a nursing home and i've been wearing a mask since March of 2020, every day I go to work. It's not hard. When I started, I never liked wearing a mask. Anytime we had a patient with a respiratory infection that was contagious and I had to wear a mask, I hated going in to treat them because I hated wearing a mask. I hated the way I felt. I felt I couldn't breathe. I was sweaty. Everything everybody says. And then COVID hit. And I had to wear a mask every day. 
And you know what? I go into work, I put it on, and I don't even notice that I even have it on. You, were you just get used to it. Hmm? You were double masked for a while. Oh yeah. I had a wear I wear a surgical mask and then we also were wearing N95s because we had COVID patients. I actually worked on a COVID ward and I can tell you it's not fun to have COVID. The symptoms of COVID are there's many of them from diarrhea and vomiting to respiratory, which a lot of people think of. But if you've ever had a pneumonia, you don't know what COVID is because it's the worst pneumonia you can imagine. It, it, these people can't breathe for weeks and weeks after they're out of the hospital. They're short of breath taking like walking 10, 20 feet. It, it, it's not fun. And I have had several patients who were anti-vaxxer, didn't believe I'm in the US, they watched Fox News and they got COVID and they got sick and they came into my facility and they told me, I'm gonna get a vaccine now because I, it hit me and I see it. Some people need to be slapped in the face and that's a sad commentary. It just, it's just, the whole thing is just so sad and scary. Well said, well said. Exactly. I think DKG's up next. Yes, please. Yes, uh, three things. Yeah, it was pneumonia, who took my mum. Uh, thanks very much, pneumonia. Fuck you. Uh, number two, uh, yeah, I was talking about John Campbell, Dr. John Campbell on YouTube. Uh, I take it back. Don't watch him. <laughs> listen to what uh, listen to what uh, Matt and Amy are saying, because apparently he also, also gives some bad information as well. So, yes, start your GP. Go there. For, go for medical advice if you want any advice at all. Not YouTube, not Facebook. Not your mate at the pub. No, yeah, none of that business. And number three, yeah, um, Matt was talking about, you know, principles, people having principles. And um, now I had a, I, I've had a conversation with a, uh, an old friend of mine earlier tonight. And hopefully, you know, uh, we'll bring that into the discussion, but not right now. It's, let's just keep moving where we are. But the interesting thing is um, he's... Uh, very much uh, um, a Labour Party supporter. In the UK, you have the Labour and Conservative Party um, support, uh, two parties over here. Uh, he's very much Labour, and he hates the Conservative Party with a vengeance. I mean, real guttural vengeance. Yeah, I can understand that. I mean, to be honest with you, I, I, I think both parties are bunch of dickheads and different reasons uh different peas or the same peas from different pods basically but the thing is what's interesting is he's he's an anti-masker doesn't want to wear masks the government tells you to wear masks now i'd be curious to know what would have happened if uh, the labor party were in charge of this country and they were mandating masks uh would he be an anti-masker then would his principles be aligned differently because it was coming from a, um, a government who he believes in? Um, I, I, I would imagine, and I'm, I am just imagining, I would imagine he wouldn't have a problem with it because it was them telling him. Because it's Boris Johnson telling him to do it, he won't have it. So, yeah, prin pr pr principles and politics are getting very, very muchly uh, entwined in ways that they shouldn't be. Anyway, I'm gibbering. I'm not making any sense. I'm too okay. Yeah, it's um, just something that uh, uh, Linda mentioned just a little while ago uh, about people changing their minds about the vaccine. Uh, there's something I forgot to mention as well. My uh, ex-wife's current partner, um, like I said, I describe him as a, well, I mean, he's still an anti-vaxxer, even though he might be a soft anti-vaxxer. Um, I said to him, I said, look, you know, I really think you should get vaccinated. Um, and he says, yeah, well, I am now. Um, you know, his his partner, you know, his person that he loves 
um, is is dying in hospital. Um, and this, you know, sadly, this is this is what it takes. But it doesn't have to be that way. Yeah, it's too you late. Know, yeah. It's too late. You know, uh, it really doesn't have to be that way. Um, if you listen to people that are going through experiences and listen to people that know what they're talking about, you would take that decision before it's too late. Um, so that's why I'm saying, you know, don't hesitate. If you if it's daylight hours after this show, go and book your vaccine right now. If you qualified for a boost booster, go and do that right now. If it's nighttime, do it in the morning. Wake up. Speak to GP, speak to whoever is, make an appointment or wherever it is you need to go to get vaccinated, do it. Do it immediately. Don't think about it anymore. Because the more you think about it, the longer it goes on, at some point it's going to be too late. Somebody in your family or even you could get seriously ill and be in the position that I'm in right now. Um, so, you know, don't don't delay it. It doesn't doesn't have to be that way. You know, just just don't don't wait until somebody is that's close to you, either the dead or dying it's it's trust that's been lost that's the problem like yeah. if if we had a, a tv program i mean look, we love t uh, hospital reality shows if there was a show on tv showing the covid wards and what goes on in them just showing the horrors i, I guarantee you 50 percent of the people say oh, it's just it's propaganda it's lies yeah you know e even if they're just showing you the whole fucking hard truth of the matter it's, most of them will say say it's lies until they're on the fucking show and they're in hospital. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, since the days of early conspiracies, you know, if you go back to sort of like when I say the modern conspiracies, you know, you go back way back to the 60s, like the 70s, like Watergate, you know, the Watergate was really one of the things that really made the public realise that, hang on a minute, you know, our, our presidents are you know, our ministers or whoever, our prime ministers lie to us. You know, I think people started to realise at that point. And yeah, they do. They absolutely do. But the thing is that what you've got to understand is that what 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 would the government be lying about and why? You need to understand why they would be lying about or something, whatever it is you're talking about. Um, so you need to understand that. And you need to understand that, that the for trying to prevent covid the things that they're asking us to do or telling us to do wear masks social distancing that's all true you know it's just common sense to, to stop a virus to really stop a virus the only way surefire way of stopping a virus dead is to isolate everybody from everybody else you know i've said this before but that's just impractical you can't do that you just can't so we have to do the next best thing. We have to do social distancing. We can wear a mask. Wear, wearing a mask is not going to stop you from getting COVID, but it does reduce the risks. It, it, and, you know, it does reduce you passing it on to other people. The, redu the risk is reduced, and it's an easy way of doing it. As Linda said, it's so simple. Just put a mask on. It doesn't hurt. After a while, yeah, it takes a bit of getting used to. When I was working with St. John's in the early part of the, the pandemic, it took me a couple of weeks to get used to it because having to wear the whole shift for eight hours permanently. It was sweaty and horrible and you feel you can't breathe, like Linda was saying. But then after a while, you just get used to it. So I started doing more shifts and, the, you know, exactly what Linda was saying, you know, you, you don't notice. So the more you get, the more you wear it, the more you just don't even notice now. I mean, my current partner, she will wear a mask when she steps out the door. As soon as she steps out the door, she puts it on. I don't. I tend to put it on when I go into a shop or somewhere public, but she wears it in the street. And now that's her decision. That's fine. That's okay. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a good thing. Yeah, but, but she's, she's used to it now. You know, and it's, honestly, it won't hurt you. I promise you. <laughs> Well, when it you know when it comes to the um, the position of I'm nervous about the vaccine, I'm I don't think I have enough information, and yada yada yada. You can do a YouTube search based on your position and find supporting information, or you can do a YouTube search based on the vaccine is the good thing to get, and you'll get supporting information. But if you do something like, uh, you know, um, a quick search for um, have COVID in hospital or something, you'll find so many posts, it's not funny. Find the same amount of videos for I got the vaccine and I'm in hospital under, you know, serious care and whatnot. You won't find that many. 
if you then chalk it up instantly to oh it's being you know uh shoveled under the rug and it's being hidden and so on well why do some get through um so you've you've got to look at it honestly without putting excuses in to make sure that your position is you know propped up you've got to look at it honestly you got to take the personal bias out of it that the the entire scientific method is based around trying to take scientific or um, trying to take personal bias out of it and over the years People have done the best they can, but still failed. But you've got to at least try. You've got to make the effort. I think that's. I think it's a huge part of things. I. I. I really think that, like, just the word research itself is so misused. It's not funny. You've got to actually understand what doing research means, right, uh, Mike? It, and you know that as far as research goes, you know, you, 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 everybody's got, you know, the, most of the people that are anti-vax and anti-mask, they have their favorite whatever conspiracies and alternate f set of facts. But there are some facts that are, one, easily verifiable and from multiple independent sources that pretty much trump everything. And that's when you look at the deaths and the excess mortality. So those numbers can't be faked because you can, like in the United States, they come from each individual state department of vital statistics and the from each individual county municipal subdivisions. So you can verify all those numbers. And if you look at them, the numbers of deaths are staggering. So regardless of what you think started all this or what people are and aren't doing or what medication should or shouldn't be given, the one thing you have to admit to is people are dying. And the statistics also show that people who are vaccinated are not dying in those, in those uh, high of numbers. And there are very few of those people are going into hospital if they get infected. Um, and I also hear about people saying, well, we need a booster. Why do we need a booster? What's the booster for It's How many vaccines out there do we see that have boosters? I mean, polio, which is close to 100 uh, percent effective, still takes three shots. And now the, the current... Uh, reg regimen is four shots. So there's an initial shot followed by three more. Uh, tetanus boosters, uh, you, flu, you got to get every year because, you know, you never know what the hell's going on with that. But almost every vaccine out there has more than one shot. So this is not unusual either. And I don't understand why people are always harping on that. Get boosters. Why do we need a booster? Do we, do we still... Do we still vaccinate against polio in the UK? I don't no, know. Because, 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 uh, yeah, I thought polio, polio was one of those things that was considered eradicated, but then it started popping up in America again. I'm not e even too sure they, they vaccinate against polio. No, I don't. I don't think in the UK we do anymore. I don't. At least I don't think so. Oh God, there's uh, a disaster waiting that. to happen. Oh well, yeah, yeah. I'm not. I'm not sure about. It. I'll, I'll check it out anyway. In the US, we 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 do. It's it's. Uh, you know, there's a it, it's well, it's, re it's research in the U.S. So that's the problem, isn't it? Mm, no, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure about that. I really haven't lo haven't looked into that. Uh, so anyway, sorry, I, I threw you train of thought. Sorry, it's my fault. No, no, I'm, I, it's all good. All good. I'm done. I've actually done a lot of research on this myself, and. Um, Polio only exists in a handful of countries in Africa, but for the most part, um, around the world, it's still standard practice to vaccinate children. Um, I don't know if the UK in particular vaccinates children, but I know that uh, the US, Germany, France, uh, China, Russia, Japan, 
they all still vaccinate their children, even though it only exists in a couple of countries in Africa, because, you know, uh, people travel. But well, I, I, imagine, I imagine we do then, I guess. <laughs> it's, it's, they, yeah, we, the UK probably does. Uh, I mean, it's one of those vaccines you get when you're really small because it predominantly infects children. So uh, it's, I'm sure it's hard to remember, you know, every shot you got when you were little. But it was 55 years ago, <laughs> <laughs> or 50 years ago when I was little. Yeah. Yeah. And, but as far as the, the boosters, they come out every time, um, they cover the variants. They're what's, um, coming out as the disease is mutating. So, uh, the boosters started coming out when the Delta variant came out. So... Uh, that's the purpose of the boosters is because as the uh, as the disease mutates, well, the vaccine may only protect against this particular strain. When there's a new strain, they got to make a modification and the booster is how they do that. Well, that got very quiet then. Well, I was just, I was, I was just looking for the uh, the button to uh, yeah, bring you in, uh, Barman, because, by the way, hello. Uh, did we even say hello uh, to you at the beginning? I don't know. But you anyway. Did, you me. <laughs> no, yeah, I was, I was yeah. a little slow. But uh, no, uh, no, um, uh, Barman's brought up some info as regarding the polio. So it's, uh, I think you should hear him out. Yeah. Oh, I was just leaving it for you. I, I've got some bits I want to read, but if you want to read the bit about polio, you can do. I'm sure I'm sure I'm wrong. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure I'm probably wrong there. Damn my eyes. Uh, a DKG. The polio vac vaccination is offered as part of the VHS routine childhood vaccination program. It is given in, by injection in five separate doses. Uh, these are normally given at eight, 12 and 16 weeks of age as part of a six in one vaccine. Three years and four months of age as part of the four in one D T A P slash I what would you know preschool to booster uh, yeah. and fourteen years of age as part of the three and one something other teenage booster. So um yeah. Uh, if you're planning uh, to travel uh, to a polio affected country, uh, you should get vaccinated if you've not been fully vaccinated before, or have a booster uh, done if uh, it's been ten years or so since your last dose of the vaccine. So I think I'm due. Same. Uh, I that stand. was off the NHS website. That was. I yes. stand. I stand corrected. Sorry, that was my bad. I, I yeah. assumed that we weren't. I didn't book body because it was like the six in one, and I hadn't seen it mm -hmm. um, actually sort of necessarily listed actually with my children. It was just kind of like. Yeah. I, I just. I just simply just didn't know. No, no, I, no so. I thought the same as you, Matt. I thought no, we don't do yeah. that one anymore. So mm -hmm. shit, we do. Yeah. No. So uh, there you go. Good yeah. for us. Uh, Amy. Uh, yes, please. I found out some interesting information on the COVID vaccine as well. And this is, I wanted to show sort of an idea of what's going on here. Um, there have been a lot of reports going around about a whole bunch of things on the vaccine, but I just wanted to let people know, because there were some questions in the chat as well. 7.81 billion with a B doses have been given. There are 3.33 uh, billion, that's another B, are fully vaccinated. So a percent of the population that's fully vaccinated worldwide is 42.7%. Um, we would like to see that higher, obviously, but that's a start in the right direction because last when I checked it last month, it was only at 30-something percent. So and this just shows you out of this vast number of people who have been vaccinated, that should look good too as well. It shows that it's, you know, that it's pretty effective. It's pretty safe with that many. If there were mass amounts of deaths, we would see them. We don't. So yeah. again, talk to your doctors, talk to your GPs, you know, talk to anybody you can that's in the medical profession that would have anything to do with these 
and check in with them, please. I, I just want to keep reiterating that throughout the night. <laughs> but yes. What, what about Gerald down the bus stop? He knows everything. Can I talk to him about it? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah, your, your response is, Amy, is, no, you fucking don't. And, uh, <laughs> That's your response, Amy. <laughs> <laughs> and don't listen to anyone who says, you know, it's a conspiracy to kill you. It's not. And I think Sarcastic Barman was up next again. So go ahead, Barman. Yeah, I uh, just going to say as well, based on the numbers we've got there, you'd think that the deaths as people were getting vaccinated would be going up, not coming down. Seems to sort of go against the whole stupid theory that these nut jobs have. Um, but speaking of nut jobs, I thought, right, let's have a quick look at Twitter, because as we all know, Twitter is the cesspool of fucking stupidity. Um, I picked <laughs> no, up a, a couple of words. <laughs> oh, you haven't heard these tweets yet, Matt. Um, so I picked out, I've just got three here that I'll read, and there's a picture I'll post on the um, Discord chat as well, because that's just hilarious. Um, very strange. That's why I know this vaccine Vaccine affects DNA, mRNA, aborted fetal cells using vaccines attached to our DNA. It's for digital ID. Look into the Georgia Guidestones. Their plans are literally etched in stone. This is the stupidity we're having to put up with. Um, what's the next one? When you're born, your parents give you your own unique DNA. The vaccine interferes with that permanently. You can never go back. You can never <laughs> get the vaccine out of your body. All the garbage inside the vax ranges from fetal body parts to no, blue chip it. technology so you can track you. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the last one that I'll read, again, they seem to be stuck with the same sort of stupidity. The fetal cells in the vaccine, in commas, uh, is not the only reason I religiously exempt myself. God bless me with this DNA and RNA, which is my life. I don't believe he wants me altering it. No, obviously he wants you to die or get really ill, you fucking moron. That's why he made someone intelligent enough to save your fucking life. But you're too stupid to see that fucking nutter and then another person complained about vaccines aren't vegetarian which i'll just copy the image and <laughs> yeah all right and mike was next please and all of these variants that keep popping up uh they're coming from countries that have low vaccination rates South Africa, one of the lowest vaccination rates in, in the world right now. And where did Omicron and Delta come from? Is that a coincidence? No, it's not a coincidence. Because if you allow the thing to spread, it's going to mutate. That's what viruses do. That's why we can't get rid of the cold. There's no vaccine for the common cold because that mutates so damn fast. Nobody can keep up with it. Just I wanted to point, oh, point that out. Yeah. Thank you. Dick is next. <laughs> yeah, the okay, so oh, um you you look at the official stats and uh you say to yourself, okay, well, you know, hospitals are overflowing with people with COVID to the point of breaking healthcare systems in, you know, somewhat or very much socialist places in the world, right? Now you look at the once in a blue moon report of somebody getting an adverse reaction to a vaccine. And if you conclude that there's a conspiracy to cover up and so on and so forth, instead of accepting those figures, you seriously are stealing my oxygen right now. And I fucking want it back. Um, Gadgets, uh, you're, uh, she's up next. Oh, did we lose someone? I think she's you can leaving. actually look up the stats on any medication, uh, any vaccine, any medicine that has ever come out ever from multiple sources. There are a handful of them that track these things, including adverse reactions, everybody who's ever died, what complications killed them, um, if it uh, is counterindicated with a condition or another medication or another vaccine, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Like all this information is available from, oh, I, I know of seven different 
sources that I tend to look things up through because I never put anything in my body I haven't done any research on. But um, the there are fewer people who have had adverse reactions to the vaccine than uh, what are considered some of the safest medications in the world, like... Uh, I'm not even going to touch, you know, how dangerous Tylenol is, but, uh, you know, everybody still says, oh, that's one of the best things. We'll give it to small children and uh, stuff like that. But no, all this information is is easily available and you can uh, even get the information from whoever's making the vaccines. Um, and it looks like M2M is next. So you go ahead. Yeah, it's just about uh, what, um, what the sarcastic barman read out, and it's the classic, uh, the vaccine containing the dead fetus. Uh, no, no, it doesn't. It really freaking doesn't. How many times you've got to go through? The only time that it was used, I think, for the, the – please, please correct me if I'm wrong. I, if somebody knows – if I've got this wrong, so please just point it out. But I'm only going by what, as I understand it. The uh, aborted fetus was used for the DNA sequencing, I believe, wasn't it, for the protein uh, to replicate the virus. It but was the, a Clone. Sorry, it was a clone cell line from an aborted fetus. That yeah, wasn't yeah. Used for a long time. Yeah, yeah. From um, like forty yeah. years ago or something, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Modern vaccines don't use it. No, exactly. Uh, I but I think that they, they, I mean, I think they used it for. I think for mRNA, they used it for research purposes and things like that, didn't they? But the vaccines themselves do not contain an aborted fetus, so nobody is injecting an aborted fetus into you when you get the vaccine. The thing is, it, it doesn't matter. We've seen this with Flat Earth. We've seen this in so many conspiracies. All it needs is someone to say it. The genie's out of the fucking bottle and you can't put the lid back on. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Barman's up next. Um, so we all know how the stupid anti-vaxxers, they love um, the VIRS, the Vaccine Adverse um, Reporting Site, don't they? So has anyone ever looked through it and seen some of the things that get reported on there? Because they're hilarious. Oh, God. So... Um, um, What's it? Hold on a second, there, barman. What's it called? Because I'll bring it up as well. Is it um, Veers? V a e r s. It's the the American site for like um, vaccine. Uh, okay. Basically, it reports symptoms and things that people have had when they've had a vaccination. So you can, right. you can basically report anything on there. And I picked out a few the other day when I was arguing with them more on online. Um, so some of the symptoms reported was animal bites and animal scratches because. Yeah, <laughs> apparently vaccines are causing that. Um, bed sharing, so um, I think someone's trying to blame their affair <laughs> on the vaccine. Um, binge drinking, which I thought, oh, that's a funny one. But the best one that I saw on there is cancer in remission. So um, oh, wow. the reported symptom for the COVID-19 vaccine was cancer in remission. So if uh, these anti-vaxxers want to use that reporting site, does that mean that the uh, the vaccine is also causing cancer to fuck off? Because if it is, that's even more of a reason to have it. Or it's maybe wow. it's a really site there. that anyone can report anything to, and it's not really monitored as much as you'd like to think it is, you moronic anti-vaxxers. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's the site. It, to break it in to get the things, you've got to search through data, uh, set it all up. It's a very handy site for seeing all the different things. And, of course, you can then look and say, there's 5,000 people who reported dead arms. That's probably an actual real symptom. There's three people who have reported that they were binge drinking or taking drugs. That's probably not. But mm. the anti-vaxxers like to cherry pick the certain ones. And there's people who say, I got hit by a bus. We'll stick it on there. And, of course, they have to put you got hit by a bus on the reports because then the doctors have got to look into it and go, right, was your site for some reason compromised? Um, were you lightheaded or anything like that? What caused you to walk in front of this bus? Oh, I was binge drinking. Oh, right, we'll put that down instead. Then. I'm taking but, drugs. I'm taking drugs, yes. After bed sharing with my mistress all night. But my cancer's gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Jesus. Oh, man. Who's up next here? Anybody? Uh, Mike uh, is. Mike Any, was. Sorry, yeah, I can't yeah. even, That was 
Move well, well, the, the VAR site, the thing people need to remember is that is just anybody can go to that site and report an adverse uh, event. Um, then what happens is this, the CDC will do an investigation on, on those events. The data that you're reading there aren't the, st the stats on the adverse events. Anybody can go there and report. As a matter of fact, there was, I have some read some screenshots where anti-vaxxers were actually telling other anti-vaxxers to go there and report adverse events, even though they hadn't actually had the vaccine. So you, you, you have to take that site with a grain of salt. You have to go then and f read the follow-on reports where the CDC actually does the investigations to find out what are actual adverse reactions that are related to the, the vaccine. So uh, anti-vaxxers love to report what's on that site, but that's not real data. You cannot use that to make a, a yeah. I've got my ha I've got my hand up. I've got my hand up, but I'm not going to wait because Mike, what you're saying is is very interesting here. It's basically what you're saying. Anti vaxxers, anti vaxxers can tell other people to report what's on that site after having just literally just posted something second before, and they go, hey, "Look, look what I just posted! <laughs> look what I just posted!" <laughs> it, yeah, it, exactly. yeah, it's, it's just bollocks. Exactly. You, you're not you're not logging in with your name, your medical. Um, numbers or you know or, or we yeah. have an nhs number you just you just log in as joe blogs write whatever shit you want and then get everybody else yeah to, uh, that's copy that's and paste yeah it. what comes out of that site when you actually go in and read the site the posted adverse events that's not peer-reviewed data that is just a report that somebody said i had this coincident with actually taking the vaccine mm -hmm. so so that's that's all that is and shouldn't be used as as definitive information yeah, you, for anything you can go to mufon and find the same kind of shit yeah. there's people posting oh, i've seen a light in the sky oh well done next captain um a lot of the sources where you can get the information about you know your vaccines your medications uh, and so on and so forth um it starts from the data that's con that's collected on on VARES because investigations are in fact done on every post that's that's on there. And um, if it turns out to be bollocks, then they disregard it. But they always look into it. They're always um, they will take it seriously. So. And of course, they're just working people. So it's really screwed up to, you know, post fake adverse reactions to anything. One, because it's wasting people's time and it's not wasting one person's time. You're wasting like 18 people's time uh, as it's not just one uh, person or even just one agency that investigates this um i know the cdc and uh the the i just lost my mind um the cdc and the fda definitely uh investigate and usually the creator of the drug will investigate i mean there are occasional instances where they don't um i.e thalidomide but it usually the at least in um in the united states and then internationally uh there are i think the the who might also but don't quote me on that but it's thoroughly investigated in the United States and it's thoroughly investigated internationally. So it's screwed up to, you know, hee hee hee. Look what I just posted. Hee hee hee. That's fucking dicks. But. Well, Mippet's got a great comment <laughs> in the chat. 
Oh, uh, let's take a quick look. Mippy, are you there, sausage? <laughs> I'm here. Why? What did I say? <laughs> you got a great comment from the chat, which is exactly what we're talking about. Do you want me to read it, or are you, are you lost? Is that the one at, with ugly German truths? No, Commander 401. Oh, that one. Okay. Those in South Africa. No, not that one. <laughs> no? Okay. God. Oh, the next one down. Okay. <laughs> Stop it. But do that Stop one if it. you want. Do that one if you want. I'll do that one first. Commando 401 says, those in South Africa did notice it rather quickly because of the fact they had some pretty good virologists because of years monitoring AIDS and other diseases, they were able to spot it first, actually. They spotted the Omicron variant. Um, and then he said, it goes on, a doctor once reported that the flu vaccine turned him into the Hulk and the database accepted the complaint. So that would have been cool to see. <laughs> Pokefish, you're... So I've been pretty quiet on this this evening, but I want to start from the beginning. And there is a person here on the panel that can confirm this. From day one of the infection in the United States, I plotted a curve of infection rate. This is was based without even looking at the CDC data or anything like that, just looking at the virology and everything behind infection rates and how it spreads. I predicted 90 days out how fast this would spread to within plus minus 5%. Now, what the person on the panel here that can confirm that part doesn't know is I have been watching this as far as other variants. And I haven't been too far off the numbers. I've also been looking at the reports of how many people are vaccinated, who's getting their updates and things like that, their boosters, things like that. And I can't even come close. I can't even come close because you have these dumbass anti-vaxxers that are going in, posting these bogus complaints and posting this bogus BS and spreading their BS. Now, if I can sit here and predict the curve months out just by looking at how viruses in general will spread in an uncontrolled environment, it, it, I'm sorry, I'm just, I understand Matt's frustration with this. I really do. I really do. I feel so bad because... Yep. These people, these anti-vaxxers are just making up shit. And they think it's funny. And it's killing people. And there's no excuse for it. There's no excuse for it. And the whole, but my freedoms and the, you know, the vaccine ID cards and all that crap. Well, how about this? You don't need to get a vaccine card. But if you infect somebody, guess what? That's attempted manslaughter. That person dies. That's manslaughter. If you knowingly infect somebody, that's attempted murder. If that person dies, that's murder. There you go. There's your freedoms and the fucking responsibility that belongs with those freedoms. You're right. M2M is next. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just something I picked up on what Luke Fisher was doing, saying, you know, that anti-vaxxers um, making up shit about, especially about... Uh, how the vaccines are affecting people. Um, some of you might remember this. There was a woman that uh, posted on social media. I think it was about three or four months into the when the vaccine program started. Um, and this woman posted on social media that um, she'd recently just got a vaccine and she had these horrible sores that appeared on her foot, right? So the anti-vaxxers took hold of this post and they completely twisted it. Um, basically said that, oh, look, this is what happens when you get the vaccine. This is what happens. And it, and it was pretty big, actually, on social media, especially on Facebook. It was massive. They were using it all over the place. Um, but it, the, the woman that actually happened to um, basically then had to put a post out um, and say, look, this is not what I meant. I, I wasn't blaming the the vaccine um, at all for this. Um, the 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 
whatever the injury she had had no relation to the vaccine whatsoever. Um, she was diagnosed with some condition that you know had no relation to it. Um, you know, and it, it, it and that's that sort of classic sort of um, stuff from um, anti vaxxers that you know it making up these uh, these stories about injuries from the vaccines um you know and you still get an anti vaxxers that still keep claiming that thousands of people are dying from the vaccines but then when you actually tie them down and say okay well where's your source of information for this where's the citation for this where are the statistical data for all these thousands of people dying for vaccines and of course you get tumbleweeds they get nothing because there's no data because it's not happening. It's quite clear it's not happening, you know, but because every single time, every single anti anti-vaxxer that you ask about this cannot come up with the data, cannot come up with the citations for it ever. And, and I must have asked hundreds and hundreds of times, especially on social media um, and once or twice on, on, on Discord and one or two chats on YouTube as well. There never is because there just isn't. There isn't thousands of people dying from the vaccine. There just isn't. <laughs> mm -hmm. much, much the same as you, Matt. You, we try and pin these people down and say to them, "Hey, give your data for this, or where are you getting that from? I had one this last week who was saying that 60% of all vaccines given out are placebos. So I said to him, so <laughs> where, where's your evidence for that? He says, are you not on Telegram? So no, that's oh. not evidence. Where's the lab report on the shots? Or at least tell me which lab ran the tests. Nope, get crickets back. It, that's all. And they will never give any actual information. Um, someone I saw posted that, oh, yeah, no one's ever died from ivermectin, but thousands die from the vaccine. So I posted a story from America, two people dying from taking too much ivermectin out of a group of 14, and the other 12 had to go to the hospital as well. Um, he says, no, that's not a real story. I've been taking ivermectin for months, and that's fine. So you're not addressing the point, though, that people have died from it. And he goes, well, are you saying that thousands of people haven't died? I said, yes, I am saying that thousands haven't died. Have some people had an adverse reaction and have a couple of people died? Yes, there isn't any denying that. It's been reported. It's been on the mainstream news and everything like that. As much as it seems to piss these people off that it actually gets reported, it's very, very rare, considering the millions of shots we've given out. But for them to then say there's thousands, as you say, Matt, they don't ever want to give numbers on it. Well, this this is part, you know, this is what I've been saying about social media. Social media is great in, in a lot of ways, but it's a double-edged sword because, you know, misinformation is spread so, so quickly because of, because of, uh, um, because of, because of uh, social media and the internet. Because you can literally say anything you want. You can be whatever you want to be. On, and nobody will actually know. You know, this is how now what most identity thefts are actually done. You know, it's done via the internet, you know, and done by social media. Um, you know, and, and I think, I think, you know, I've, I've been saying this for quite a long time that there needs to be more controls, more um, controls through legislation as to what you can and can't say are on the internet and through social media. And of course, you know, you're going to get the people that are for free speech. No, you can't, you can't, uh, you can't do that. You know, it's free speech. I could say whatever you want. Well, no, not, and not when it's actually affecting people's lives, you can't, because this is what's happening. You know, this is why, you know, this is, this is because of the position that I'm in at the moment is because my ex-wife decided not to get a vaccine because of misinformation or partly to do with it. You know, and this is, this is, this is where we're at now. Um, you know, so yeah, that, that absolutely. I, I still believe now, even more so, that there needs to be legislation to control what's what's said on social media and what you can and can't. Okay, by. it could help. It could help. Uh, Mike, you had a hand. Yeah, I think it was Loki Fish who brought up about people with their, you know, my rights kind of thing. Um, Justice uh, John Harlan, U.S. Supreme Court Justice. Uh, here's a quote. But liberty secured by the Constitution of the United States to every person within its jurisdiction does not impart an absolute right in each person to be at all times and in all circumstances wholly freed from restraint. Society based on a rule that each one is a law unto himself would soon be confronted with disorder and anarchy. 
Real liberty could not exist under the operation of a principle which recognizes that the right of each individual person to his own, whether in respect to his personal or, or property, regardless of injury to others, may be done to others. That was uh, actually a ruling on a mandatory vaccine law and that was upheld by the Supreme Court. And basically what that says is your, your personal rights do not extend beyond uh, the point where it affects other people. It cannot, uh, survive, uh, liberty cannot exist in such a society. So all you people that want to talk about your rights to say, it's my body, my choice, well, when your choice affects others, it's no longer your choice only. Amen. Exactly. Uh, Linda's up. Oh, did I catch you off guard? Linda. Linda. Well, we're I'm sorry. sharing a microphone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that, that's exactly it. It's... It's not only about the rights, but it's also free speech. Free speech doesn't mean you can say and do whatever you want because you feel like it. That's right. not what us in the United States, what our Constitution stands for. It, it just isn't. However, there's a portion of people in the United States that think that that's what it stands for, that they can do whatever they want, whenever they want, and say whatever they want, whenever they want, and they don't have to suffer the consequences. And, and that's really what it's about. You can really say whatever you want, do what you want, but there are consequences. And, you know, you have to pay the consequences. Huh? Yeah. Huh. I, I want to, uh, sorry, I want to quickly call out Tiny Captain there. You remember that nurse that fainted on TV getting the vaccine? Andy Vaxxers were claiming she died. I think that was uh, Riley, wasn't it? Uh, it was one of the the more angry motherfuckers, but um, yeah, it was, it was um, yeah, yeah. She had needle phobia. She appeared alive and well back on TV after that. But oh yeah, God forbid you jump on that. Sorry, Linda. Go ahead. Um, no, and you and you're right about her. I mean, someone just fainting because they got a vaccine doesn't prove that the vex the vaccine. The actual vaccine, not the needle, didn't make them mm -hmm, faint. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the medicine, it yeah. takes longer to work on you than the second you put it in your arm. <laughs> it's not like TV where they give you medication and may knock you out and you're out. <laughs> Doesn't work that way. Um, who was up next there? Um, catch in. Okay. Um, needle phobia is actually fairly common. And, uh, well, excuse me. It's common enough that um, pretty much in every, uh, in any large group, you're going to have a notable percent. You're going to have a... <laughs> I would say a remarkable percentage, um, five or so percent. It scares the fuck out of me. People who yeah. are frightened of needles and uh, some percentage of those people will faint when injected with a needle or given an IV or having blood drawn or something like that. It's, there's a reason why they have you sit down for this. So it happens and it's, it's not even that rare. Uh, 
uh, Mike. Yeah, it, the, that nurse, I won't mention her name uh, on, on the stream, but that is a, is a good example because one thing that happened was is some anti-vaxxer went and then faked her uh, – uh, obituary on one of those national obituary sites. And that's what really kicked things off. And the problem was, is then all these act and anti-vaxxers inundated her Instagram and her Facebook pages, demanding evidence that she was still alive. Um, yeah, I uh, remember that. I remember ber that. Much. Berating her and calling her all kinds of nasty names, her and and her her children, and talking about her, her husband. This is the level that some of these people are 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 working at, and it was just a cry and shame what happened to her. And it was so easy to verify that the woman was still alive, but no one wanted any. They didn't want any pictures from the hospital. They didn't want any pictures from like. The, the local news where she lives. No, they wanted, like, I don't know what they want. I don't really know what would have satisfied them. But it was, it was, it was downright hideous what, what all those anti-vaxxers did to her and her family. DKG. Yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 what's fascinating is we've seen these same tactics been used by flat earthers. Uh, with flat earthers, you know, complaining that the you know, or, or stating that the uh, Challenger disaster never happened, and posting pictures about the uh, astronauts alive, and it's not even like an astronauts; it's just people who look like them, or relatives, or whatever. It's like we, we've seen these tactics uh, in the flat Earth. Now, the flat Earth, you know, people say, "Why are you, why are you fighting those people? What are you fighting? It's, it's, it's harmless. It's harmless." And you go, "Yeah, well." And I remember, I remember talking about this a long time ago. Said, "Yes, this is harmless, but it's going to turn into something really bad." And this is exactly what we're seeing: the same tactics from Flat Earth being used in anti-vaxxers, uh, um, anti-maskers, and all these kind of people. So the, the 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 social media has blown up in the same way, but just on a huge scale. A vast scale, and it's affecting everybody now. And it's, it's, I just think it's, I just don't know. I just sit back and look at it about it, thinking, thinking about it, and say, well, you know, we were there at the start. We saw this. We saw shit happening. You won't believe where this is going to go. And now, it, this is exactly where it's going. This is why QAnon exists. This is why anti-vaxxers exist. Just fucking idiots out on Facebook. Twitter, whatever, spreading lies, misinformation, and people just suck it up to it and believe in it. It's just sick. And now people are dying. Run over. Matt. Hey, here. I was about to, uh, sorry, let me jump in here real quick. I'm uh, just a uh, shout out to the mods. Uh, we got a couple of real anti-vax fucks in the chat right now. Tyrone and um, uh, what's Gloria. the other one there? Yeah, Gloria, you know who you fucking are. Now, well, I just want to give a shout out to the mods. Um, uh, we don't, you know, we don't want to do the mute and hide. You know, we, we try to play as open as we can. And right. You know, um, but at the same time, there will come a time when the line is, uh, you know, crossed. Right. So, uh, you know, um, try to let it go as long as you can. But at the same time, I mean, holy fuck, that that thing about autism there. I mean, Amy Hogan and I are just yeah. ready to reach through the screen and grab some fucking necks. You know what I mean? So yes. holy Fuck man, no, I do. Yeah. I'm, I'm like human over here. <laughs> yes, and you your do. toe is right on it, dudes. So just yes, yeah, yeah. The mods are fantastic. <laughs> so they are. Oh. they're good. Yeah, they're incapable. You know, the mods first are and only freaking warning. That's it. Yeah, and if Amy posts anything about Wakefield or myself as well, and they attack, well, you know exactly what to do then. But uh, let's get back to hands here. I think it was Barman. Yep, Barman's at the no, top. Matt, Matt was first. 
Uh, no, sorry. Oh, I, sorry. I, I, I've kind of lost my train of thought after that now. So uh, oh. no, it's fine. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, I saw one of the comments we were just discussing, and I've got to address it because it's actually this self fulfilling sort of thing, which is really fucking amusing. It's the Gloria Miller one. Uh, it's the number of people suffering serious adverse effects following the vaccinations of the Wuhan coronavirus is 50 times higher than the number of seasonal flu, according to journalist Alex Berth. Person, which is actually quite good, really, if you've got half a brain cell. Because if you think about it, as we've already said with the numbers, they've given what three billion people are now fully vaccinated, uh, seven billion odd shots have been given out, and it's only fifty times higher than the seasonal va- seasonal flu one. And we only what? I think in the UK we don't even give out <laughs> a million seasonal flu shots, and we've yeah. done um, almost sixty million. So if it's 50 times higher, but we've done 60 times the amount of fucking shots, that's not fucking bad, really. (laughs) If anything, that shows that the fucking coronavirus vaccine is safer than the flu vaccine that everyone gets every fucking year. So if you're going to post something as stupid as that, at least think it through. I know it's very difficult for the two brain cells you've got, but... (laughs) And as for uh, Polar Belinsky, you're just fucking nuts as well. Oh, yeah. there we go. Thanks, so, Charlie. I was about to do it. Yeah, yeah. That was that was a step too much, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. Absolutely. Um, yes, that yes. was definitely too much. Yeah, you you don't be calling people commies and stuff just because we have a different opinion than you. Communism is a little bit different than the we pretty much let anyone say what they want around here thing. And if you want to ask, motherfucker, you can talk to PJ CNET and Gary Wabinga and a few that don't agree with us. And they pretty much get to say what they want around here. So, you know, have cock, we'll suck, pucker up, fuck Um, you. I'm pretty sure I'm not a communist. You know, fuck me, man. Loki, go for it. Okay, I stepped away for a little while. I don't know if anybody mentioned this, but uh, PJ CNET said that he held back tonight out of respect. Much respect to you, dude, because there are a lot of anti-vaxxers that would not have given that to us. Exactly. Well said. Yeah, I, I I noticed that as well. Uh, yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, if you're still around, yeah, it's. Uh, um, but you know, you, you, I'd still like people to give their opinion. We've got somebody here who's clearly given their opinion. Uh, obviously, wasn't here at the beginning, um, and that's fine. I don't, I don't, I'm not offended by it. You know, it's fine. They've got their opinion. I mean, a lot of it is just complete misinformation. Uh, to give an example, total misinformation. Uh, to give an example, um, I mean, he s- said that there was uh, data of a certain number of deaths following uh, COVID shots. But here's the thing. It's the word following. Just because something says following COVID shots doesn't mean it was a result of of COVID shots. Many people have died from COVID shots. Nobody has claimed or has ever claimed that the COVID vaccination is a guarantee that you will not contract the virus. Nobody's ever said that. Well, and that guy got hit by a bus and was taking drugs and binge drinking. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's, that's exactly, that's exactly the, the right analogy. Absolutely right. You're welcome, PJ CNET. You're absolutely welcome. Um, there's a, a comment I just posted in the green room, and I'm scared to even fucking try to read that out. Does anybody want to? Um, or should we? Do we give that lip service, or do we uh, maybe oh. just not say their name? Uh, what the Let's see. fuck? I'll give that some lip service at least. I'll, I'll not say their name. It says COVID-19 vaccines are part of a larger problem. The abortion industrial complex and the immoral practices of biomedical researchers and the pharmacological industry. But that's no. Um, one, <laughs> people have gotten pregnant after there, there have been children conceived and born um, while the mother was vaccinated, and so far, uh, there are um, not enough cases of anything for there to be, like, there's no data on uh, birth defects, because so far there haven't been any. And um, 
of course that that could change but that like right now um there are the it's it's not the vaccine is kind of like a bulletproof vest so it doesn't guarantee that you won't get that you won't you won't die but you know if you get shot where most people get shot you probably won't die um it doesn't mean that you're immune it just means you're less likely to die if you get shot so if you if you compare the vaccine to that then it might make you feel better as far as um people who have died from COVID even though they were vaccinated. Yes, that that's happened and there's data on that. And I can, will be the first to admit that it's fully, uh, that it's both effective and not perfect at the same time. Now, uh, Linda, you had something? Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, I just wanted to comment on that the abortion industrial complex and the immortal practices of biomedical researchers and the pharmacological industry. Wow. <laughs> I want to know what the hell that means. First off, I live near Pfizer, where they develop the COVID vaccine. And I know people who work there that would take great offense to this. Um, they are not immoral biomedical researchers. They take great pride in what they do. And I don't, I, I, understand when people say big pharma is a bad guy and whatnot it is a business trying to make money but the people that work there are just like anybody else working a job and the scientists that work there are serious scientists and they take their job very seriously that's why this vaccine was developed so quickly because the scientists around the world got on it. I mean, the thing is, the scientists work in the pharmaceutical industry aren't all doing their job thinking, oh, shit, I can't wait to screw someone over. And exactly. I'm going to get big bonuses when I come up with, with something that's going to make the pharmacy company millions. I'm just, oh, I can't wait. That's not what happens. They're people, like you say, they're people, they're scientists. Well, you want to talk about immoral medical researchers, talk about Dr. Wakefield. That's just look at that. All that was fuck that fucking fuck. Yeah. It, it, everything, all that shit was fabricated so he could sell his he didn't vaccine. Work for a pharmacy. And that that's all it was about. So you want to talk about immoral? Let's start there. He's the worst. He's the fucking worst. He wrote the goddamn script and the, and the book on how to love. Well, basically, he also used a little bit of a page out of the whole uh, lead is good in gasoline lobby tricks as well. But it was totally for self profit, 100% absolutely positively. And you dumb fucks are still sucking it up. For God's sakes, man. Shit. I'll spill mop water on the floor. You can come over to my house and suck. Suck it up, and I'll call the floor clean, bitches. No, oh, come on, Dick. We, this, we, this, we are the shills. Uh, at least shill out his Teespring store. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one eight hundred. Lick my shithole. There, you'll find them every time. Fuck Wakefield. Uh, M two. Yeah. Um. Before I address this, can I can I just say, uh, please don't delete everything that um, Yoko uh, actually posts because. Um, Oh, we've got a super chat. Do you want to do, you want to do the super chat first, uh, Amy? Uh, sure, if you don't mind. I'll just yeah, yeah. grab that real quick. Thanks. Um, Woden Toad for two American dollars says, too many bots, not enough super chats here. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Toad. <laughs> 
Yeah, so as I say, please, please um, I don't know what everybody thinks, please don't delete everything that Yoko posts um, because some of the information I think we probably would want to address and there's one in particular I want to address. Um, I mean, my opinion is as long as he's not insulting people directly, let him post whatever he wants to post. Um, and as long as it's not offensive, if he's just put in statistic data that we clearly know is incorrect, that he's claiming is something, then I don't see an issue with that. You do want to do that super chat as well before I address this one. Yes, please. Thank you. We got Charlie Welsh for two American dollars. It says troll tax, maybe troll toll. <laughs> that was our <laughs> <laughs> red, no blue. Ah, I'm just doing the bridge keeper there. Um, so anyway, the, so there, before you go, Matt, sorry, just yeah, yeah. one thing. There was a discussion. Uh, biggest in the chat had brought it up. Um, these ones posting the spam posts, they won't respond to anybody. And it gets to a point where that is not a chat. They're not interacting. And in, uh, in, in, so um, I, I think that is worth uh, eventually you've got to fuck off. Right. Um but I see what you're saying, because in this situation, there is something that we can step up and grab and say, no, 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 fuck you. So why don't we give it like a 10 second rule? I mean, Matt, um, you're modded anyway, so you can always click and still see it if you want to address it. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah I get, well, that's that's because I have. Yeah, well, that's exactly what I've done there. So I just want yeah. to address one that Yoko actually posted. He, uh, po I think it's, it, was, it was he or she, I'm not sure. But anyway, it said uh, 251,000 lives are claimed each year because of medical error. About 9.5% of all deaths annually in the US. Uh, Dr. Martin Macri, professor of surgery at St. John's Hopkins University. This is a classic uh, thing of a conspiracy, uh, basically taking something out of completely out of context and claiming it there's something that isn't. You need to actually read it carefully. 251,000 lives are claimed each year because of medical error. Yes, people do. A lot of people do claim uh, deaths through medical error. You know, they do uh, sue medical people. Um, that, that's the same here in the UK for all kinds of things. Uh, uh, they're all investigated. Um, and ma the vast majority of those are not seen as medical error. That's just a fact. So you're, not, you're taking something completely out of context. They're claiming each year doesn't necessarily mean there are 251,000 deaths each year because of medical yeah. error. And that's got nothing related to COVID, so I don't even know what you're posting. And you're missing a very important point, Matt. There's 117% yeah. of uh, of statistics on the internet are made up. <laughs> exactly. That's True. my point from earlier on. You know, you, you can take, yeah, exactly. You can make up whatever you want. But, you know, it's kind of like I'm just reading something and I'm reading more carefully than he's actually using it for. You know, and that's twice I've done that to him now so far. Because he's, you know, it's typical of any conspiracy theorist. They take something, uh, they take a, like a little piece of information and they twist it. And this is what you're doing, not reading it properly. It's a, they're claiming uh, 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 lives lost through Omega, but that doesn't mean there are, you know. There are three kinds of lies in the world lies, damn lies, and statistics. <laughs> yeah. I like that one. <laughs> yeah. I don't. I don't have a. I don't have an issue with statistics. Um, quite often, when people talk <coughs> statistics, I, I ask for the source. Um, and it's a little bit more difficult in in the YouTube chat because not everybody's got oh. the uh, power to post links. But you know, yeah. But the problem is, is sixty four percent of all statistics are made up on the fucking spot. <laughs> you know <laughs> what I mean? <laughs> well, I mean, in, you know, if if you can if you can cite the source, you can track it mm. back. You know, and you and you know yeah, yeah. sometimes you can track it back to a reliable source and if they haven't got a source then you can just dis dismiss it that's fine i mean it was huh? yeah it, it was uh i think it was galileo who posted the other week you can't always trust internet posts right you know i mean that's yeah, just how it is yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. oh, there's something as well <laughs> you know and, that uh, with abraham lincoln that's <laughs> right that's right that's who it was yeah some dead fucker, you know. <laughs> I mean, you know, I lightsaber. Yeah. yeah, I mean, but it, but even even medical people, especially you know, when they get on social media and they make a quote, you know, they they get it wrong sometimes as well. You know, they're human beings. You know, they they get it wrong. They get you know they get misinformed. You know, so that does happen. You know what I mean? So, just because a doctor's posted something doesn't necessarily mean that it's true. You still need to validate the source. So I would like to see 
um, a source of this information, where this actually comes from. Or I'm sure the, the doctor did quote it perhaps online somewhere. But, you know, I would like to see the source of it. But still, my point still stands. It says claimed, uh, you know, 251,000 lives. But it doesn't mean men there was. Good show. Good show. Mike. That's a really good point that, that, that Matt is making, too, that there is always, always a source for a given set of information, a given set of data. And too many times people take what someone says, especially on social media, at face value and run with it without ever thinking about where does it come from. That should always be your first question. Where does this come from? Where does this information come from? Can I find the source of uh, of where of where this comes from? Well, and the thing is, the thing also, Mike, the, the people who are sort of trying to relay the truth, they will give you the source. When the people are telling the right. lie, they won't give you the source. Yes. Yeah, and I hate I hate when the, they reply with a source that, of a bit shoot video. I mean, it's just ridiculous. There's got to be a documented source for everything, and in my experience, there always is. You just got to find it. Loki fish. I think another thing that people need to watch out for when looking at this data and various posts and things like that is. If the post starts off with the big numbers first and the percentages second, it's pushing an agenda. It's trying <laughs> to distort, it's trying to distort the perspective. Because I could go, hey, 50 billion people X, when that being only one percent. But you know, we won't mention the, the the that small percentage until way later. Because we've already got that punch in, that shock value in. And that's the way they do it. That's exactly the way they do it. Well, it's, 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 like, the, it's like the Earth rotating at 1,000 miles an hour. You know, it's yeah, versus thing, one it? revolution per day. Yeah, yeah exactly. Dick? Yeah. Yeah, um, uh, we've got a cool exchange that happened. Uh, DK is going to lead us through, and it very much takes us right to uh, where. Well, it's it's exactly this, isn't it? DK, here, I'm going to bring it up. Take us through. Oh shit! Um, right, well, bring the um, bring the no, not that. Bring the poster up first. The the, the one that's in your um, in the uh hang on let me let me post it the I mean, poster okay I, wait a minute I, 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 I tell you, i'm gonna post it right here all right and um, everybody chat amongst yourselves for a minute yeah i don't know what he's talking about now i had the chat thing ready to go okay yeah the thumbnail pick okay you should have said so fuck that's all right. what i was trying to get out <laughs> this is all right we need the jeopardy music yeah. See, the thing is, yeah. the thing is, don't forget, there are people out there who are going to save us. They want to save us from this shit, and they're going to go on marches. They're going to have meetings, and oh shit! Just look at the look what the humanity is standing against: medical apartheid. A apartheid. What's well, a uh, fucking strong word to communism? You. Oh, yeah, we're against communists. These are socialists and they're against communists, so that doesn't make sense. Uh, coercion, uh, whatever that's supposed to mean. Social credit systems, vax passports, and mandates of any kind. Not, wow. not just bad communism. ones or good ones. <laughs> just just any kind. Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, communism. We're going to take down communism. Uh, and these are fucking left wing people doing this anyway. So Wow. So, yeah, there's going to be a march at Parliament Square, 18th of December. Are we shilling this out? Uh, um, uh, yeah. Come and meet us at the I, I, shills. Live. Yeah, well, uh, on the thumbnail, I blocked the goddamn information, but uh, <laughs> I that was uh, edited. I don't have that edited. I never saved it. I never thought I'd be using the fucking thing again. Well, um, there you go. The trolls in the, in the chat can go in during this march. Yeah, no big names, no logos. Yeah, what's that even supposed to mean? I don't get what, it. What, what, I, they try, what they're trying to say is, is like, oh, oh we're not going to have David. I, I know. There. I get it. That means you're not allowed to wear your I am Mark Sargent shirts. Yeah, no, <laughs> no logos, no uh, Earth is flat logo. 
just everyone from society united bring your banners stickers and leaflets you know there's one thing that that the one thing there's one thing on there that really fucking pisses me off medical apartheid what oh, yeah. i just i just thought you were going to say the words who the fuck is making anyone do anything nobody is making you get a vaccine Nobody's making you wear a mask. You could not get a vaccine. You could get wet, not get a mask. But nobody's forcing you down and pinging you down and get those things. You can make a choice not to, but you've got to live with the consequences of the things that you don't do. That's the uh, difference. Uh, nobody's well, fucking, you know, that, that fucking one sentence really fucks me off. Yeah, really but, but it goes on to the Vax Passport, so that means you won't be able to go to uh, the next um, big musical event that you want to go to yeah. because you haven't got the Vax Passport. But, but still, it's not medical fucking apartheid. I mean, you know, I've said this before, <laughs> and, and I, I've said this fucking before, right? If, if you think that your freedoms have been taken away from you, Go to fucking China or North yeah. Korea. In China at the start of the pandemic, do you know what they were doing? In the blocks of flats um, in the, in the uh, Wuhan district, they were welding the fucking front doors shut so people couldn't get out. Well, they good, were luck, making, good luck with that, my doors would. They had, they, had, <laughs> they had guards on some of the doors and on streets so you couldn't go past them. Armed fucking guards, and you're talking about you losing your fucking freedoms. I know. I, yeah. that's, 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 you know, I really don't get that about off. people in this country or even the US talking about freedom, losing their freedom. We oh. are the freest fucking countries in the world. Yeah, and this is yeah. gets me. They they they're allowed to. They they've got the freedom to go to doing this protest to protest about it. Yes. Go to fucking China. Yeah. Go to fucking North Korea, and you'd be fucking shot. Mm, 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 oh, Tiananmen mm. Square. Remember that, anybody? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, I mean, holy fucking shit. You know, you put things in perspective. Nobody's fucking removing your freedoms. Nobody's pinging you down to do these things. It's called responsibility. It's called taking the responsibility for things and fucking do the things that you should do. But sadly, sometimes the government have got to say, hang on a minute, but we're not going to make you do it, but you're not going to be able to do these things until you get vaccinated. That's fine. Okay. Oh, woohoo. You can't go to a club. You can't go to a fucking bar. You can't go to a pub. You can't go and get your hair done because you because you're not fucking vaccinated. Oh I'm no, they sorry. can't they can't go to music festivals. That's what No, you can't go to music about. festivals. Woo fucking who? Jesus Christ in China, like I said, they were welding people shut in their fucking apartments. I mean, you put things in perspective. You know, these people really fucking Oh, I'm starting to get. Oh, sick. oh, yeah, Matt, Matt, you have got plenty of time to get pissed off yet. We haven't even got into the into the um, story of it yet. Mike's got his hand up. Yeah, to go back to Justice Harlan, stated that people don't have a right to refuse health measures, saying that citizens have a duty to one another and society as a whole. You got to exactly. There's a there's a bigger picture that no one wants to to. To look at and linda was arguing with somebody a couple of about a year ago who literally stated that his right to do whatever he wants is more important than other people's lives he literally said that so this is the mentality that that we're dealing with yeah, exactly. they don't, people don't believe that they have any sort of of responsibility to anyone else what a cunt. You know, and, I, and it, it, it's kind of going back to like, oh, sorry, uh, uh, Katia, and I'll, I'll, I'll be one, one second. So I didn't realize you put your hand up. Um, you know, I wish sometimes, you know, our nations would go back to kind of like the World War II mentality where everybody mucks in together, everybody helps each other um, and supports each other, and takes responsibility for, for what they're actually doing and, and puts the effort into to solving a problem. And this is what we have, but we in society we just don't seem to have that anymore. Mm. You know, there's not enough people that gives a shit about everybody else anymore. Yeah, saucepans you know, for yeah. Spitfires. <laughs> exactly. Well, all know. that fucking aluminium that never went anywhere because it was it was propaganda. They, they never fucking used it because it was shit. <laughs> but but the, but people were behind it. They, yeah, they weren't. But that's anyway. the thing, you know. It's the it's, yeah. It's what they call. It's, got, it's, yeah, it's what we call in the UK, isn't it? The blitz mentality. But yeah. that, that, that's that's what brought people together because yeah. they were... It's what you know, made the, Britain great. Yeah, uh, yeah. We've got lots of hands up, by the way. I'm, I'm just... Yeah, sorry, sorry, go ahead. 
Yeah, Amy and yeah, I think Kat, 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 Katshin, I think, was first, I think. Okay. <laughs> so as far as rights are concerned, there aren't that many that are considered rights. I mean, there are um, you know, the life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, of course, and you've got the Miranda rights, but for the most part, like the amendments, and people are talking about uh, you know, freedom of speech. Uh, freedom of speech just means that Congress will not make any lie any laws prohibiting speech about a particular topic. Like um, the actual First Amendment says, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the exercise of or abridging the freedom of of free sp of sorry the freedom of speech or of the press or of the right of people to peaceably assemble and the petition and to petition the government for redress of grievances. So the actual wording of the, um, it doesn't say that you have the right to freedom of speech. It says that Congress will not make a law that restricts your freedom of speech. Now, if everybody has the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, then your um, your life and your freedom of speech should not interfere with somebody else's life and liberty. So, like, freedom of speech is not a right. Just, just so everybody knows. Uh, Amy. Uh, thank you very much. I just wanted to address the Paula Oppenheimer in the chat. She said we're a bunch of, you know, we're terrible people and, and the graphene oxide in the vaccines will get us. <laughs> just so you know, there is not any graphene oxide in the vaccines. That's not something that goes in there. Um, I am addressing this one. I, I know we're not supposed to address these bots, but it's... Yeah, there's a lot of them in here. <laughs> but yeah, I just wanted to address that. There, That's been debunked a thousand times over. And I'm sure she'll have other things that she wants to say as well. But these look like a lot like just copy and paste things. Um, yeah, so I've just, but I did want to address that. And sh they're not really engaging there. Plus, I just wanted to say, uh, yeah. No, th th yeah, and she was saying how the, uh, you know, the graphene oxide will get the, pe the terrible people that were hosting this chat so yeah no <laughs> try again thank you <laughs> <laughs> yeah. all right Entrish should we yes Entrish oh, Leif should said, we... Um, paula oppenheimer got her info from yoko <laughs> <laughs> probably programmed by the same person if you yeah. ask me um yes. uh, dk should i bring up that chat then well before you do, let me, let me fill you in. This uh, that um, that poster um, that Dick put up that came up on Facebook. Uh, a, a really, really old friend of mine um, was saying, "Yeah, I'm going. I'm going to this march. I'm going to this march." And so I responded to him on Facebook. You know, as you do, you, you see friends post things, and you just you just do the thing. And having being part of this community, you kind of know where this is going. So, Dick, you can you can pull that up now if you want. Uh, start at the top and work our way down. Bring it, zoom it in, zoom it in, bigger, 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 bigger. So, it, yeah, there we go, there we go. So, I just said, you know, uh, I'd be wary of event like this. Uh, the people that host these events don't give a fuck about any of the issues listed, not based on reality anyway. There will be speakers that are full on conspiracy nut jobs, anti vaxxers, anti 5G, because it's a weapon, of course, uh, COVID deniers, anti maskers, all the way to flat earthers. If Katie Hopkins or David Icke shows up, I suggest you go enjoy a pint in a nice London pub. If you want a sneak peek at these kind of, kind of events, uh, check out this lovely man's videos um, I linked to Jason of the Disby family who loves to go to all these kind of fucking events and Jason of the Disby family is a flat earther he was the one that was part of the um, the, the European uh, flat earth tour um, 
And I just asked him if he had any link to the event because I, I did a search for it. I couldn't really find it. I found lots of Twitter posts um, with the same poster. Uh, and I did find a website that had kind of links to it, but very, very um, short on details. So he says, thanks very, thanks very much for your comments, Duncan. No speakers at this march. So I just said, get as many leaflets as you can. If you don't get one that says NASA lies, Earth is flat, I'll be both surprised and disappointed. Because you just know they're going to be there. Yeah. Uh, and so his wife jumps in. D, we should just call her D. Uh, I've been on three marches. Funny, I didn't get such a leaflet. I can assure you that, yeah, there are always the kooks. Hmm. The easy targets, but the majority of the people there who care very much. And yes, the people at the host these events also care. They're also fucking brave. Yeah, go on. Yeah, that will show the man. Go on a march in a free country where you're not going to get shot. That will show them. <laughs> oh, and then this came in. And by the way, get this. We are anti maskers Sad you feel about this way, Duncan. Keep watching BBC. Now that's a as, as, as a slight. Because, wow. Because people, you know, they, they say, "Oh, watch BBC, watch BBC," because they'll just tell you lies. The fucking BBC report on the news, just the same as every other fucking news channel. <laughs> the BBC doesn't do any. The BBC doesn't go out there saying, "Oh, take the vaccine, you bastards!" Or Boris Johnson will come round and shoot your babies. It doesn't fucking happen. And so this whole thing about the BBC, it's it's just a joke. So I get to go. Hey, oh shit! I just realised I walked into a friend and his wife, who are both conspirators. <coughs> excuse me so that's a shame say, dude yeah anti-mask is the opposite of caring it's playing roulette with people's lives oh but duncan masks are just virtue signaling they don't work it's like a badge i'm afraid what? And i care and that's what they want <coughs> that's what they want you are being manipulated big time buddy Sorry, I've got a tickle on my throat now. Good God. I'm being manipulated. I am being manipulated. I, so I say, they do work. Ask a surgeon, not Facebook. And I mentioned the show tonight, and I'll, I'll be addressing it on the show. Lee, are you in the chat? I don't see you there. Uh, can someone else read the next bit out? My, my throat's got a tickle. <coughs> Sure. Uh, it says, if you go into a supermarket and smell bread, they don't work. If you sit opposite someone and both spit at each other, they might help. Uh, put one on on the bus. I don't have to put one on in a noisy pub and shout conversation in someone's ear. Oh, that's okay. Sorry, doesn't make sense. Well, it doesn't block air. It blocks particulate. So, of course, you're going to still smell things. But. Yeah, I mean, come on. How do the commentators in F1, when they've been allowed back in the paddock wearing masks, actually talk into their microphone so I can hear it? Why? Because the air pressure moving through still directs to the microphone. It's no big deal. But me as a smoker, if I inhale on a cigarette, quickly put the mask in front of my face and blow, all the air goes to the sides. And as such, it protects you, the person I'm standing in front of you, ignorant fuck. Um, now, keep reading there. Sorry. My, my, my wife my wife pulled up a great uh, web page. Uh, why can I still smell my fart when I've got my mask on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, it just drives me crazy when they use that one. Right. So, so we get so, part is gas. So we get to the end. Virus is not. We're getting, we're getting to the end. This 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 was the last comment, and uh, as you can see, there's no little green dot next to his name because he went offline after I said I posted this. 
you are conflating two different things a mandate for mask wearing while a su- while supermarket shopping and being allowed to go without one in a pub are two sides of the same coin going to the pub without a mask is a choice shopping for food is not transfer rate in a supermarket is thousands times higher or greater than in a pub makes perfect sense and i'm sure barman will tell us all about that but yeah yeah so that was that was a conversation i had with somebody who i considered a friend i hope he'd still be a friend i just i i just can't see a way to dig him out of this rabbit hole uh it's it's very concerning you know especially with you know matt's opening story and when when you put the two in d- together dk it's fucking scary yeah i mean what would happen with the next uh post i see from this guy is oh shit my wife's in hospital we went to a march we came back and she fell ill and oh she, now she's in intensive care and i've got to tell my kids that she might not come home where, where, where do you fucking go with that yep Honestly, it it's one of those. I'm, I'm, I'm glad I'm glad Dick brought this up at the end because it kind of circles the story of tonight's show. It does very much. We we uh, DK, you just closed with the chicken and the egg. You've tied it up. I could do so, more animal sounds if you want, but yeah. So I think <laughs> I think Luca Fish wants him. Yeah. So his whole thing about the masks. Now, here's the thing: is the masks work fine via electrostatic adhesion in combination with particulate trapping due to moisture in the mask. Multiple universities have had dorms volunteer to be infected with the flu and wear various types of masks on each floor of the dorm. So it's not like there's no science behind this. There's no evidence behind this. The fucking masks work. Period. And yeah, there, there's. Oh, sorry, go on. Look at. Go ahead, look at me. Sorry, I thought you'd finished. And anybody that actually does any real research versus prove to me masks don't work. Google search. You know, if they do any real research, they'll find all this same data. Go ahead, Matt. I'm I'm done. But yeah, but they can go on a march and hear you know other people say other things. So uh, yeah, there's go. there's look if it's hit on something. There's there's a, a real general misconception as to what masks are, at least um, in terms of the the um, you know the proper um, medical face masks. They I don't know if you remember, but um, back at the near the beginning of the pandemic, there was a lot of memes going around where they were saying that the the weave, the, the fabric weave of the mask uh, is too big to stop a, a virus to get through. A virus is much smaller. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You remember yeah. that? You know, and, and, and it, yeah. ugh, it, it, it's just so typical of people completely misunderstand. And, and also, it was also from um, the other side of the coin, people that <laughs> will wear the mask, you know, they seem to have the impression that it protects them against everything. Well, no, it doesn't. The whole idea of the mask is that it stops particulates, as as, um, as Katzin mentioned before, um, and also water droplets. That's what it is, because the virus will only travel through the air on water droplets. The virus itself, as far as we know, does not travel through the air on its own. Yeah, it's it not airborne. Travel, yeah, it's not airborne. It can only be airborne through through aerosol or through water droplets, i.e. people sneezing and spitting and uh, or whatever, whatever, but other bodily fluids. I'm, I'm um, sitting on my aerosol right now. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah, you know, it, it, it's just sort of classic kind of total misunderstanding, misconception of, of what um, of what a mask can actually do. As, as you know, everybody's already always claimed, you know, again, they keep saying, oh, the mask doesn't work. It doesn't stop me. From, no, it doesn't stop you from getting COVID, but it will reduce the risks of you getting it. And the reason why it's suggested to use because it's easy and it's cheap. 
because the majority of people get who get COVID, and it's been shown, is that they inhale other people's water droplets and you know aerosols and things like that. And this is why hospitals use it because there's quite often in some circumstances when um, for treatments they are using um, aerosol water droplets to to treat people. Mm. So the medical staff have to wear masks because they could be breathing in these water droplets. So that's why <laughs> quite often or they have to be double masked to make absolutely sure. The important right. thing you say, though, Matt, is they're cheap. And now, what the government well, could have said is, we all need to walk around in those big, full bio, you know, decontamination suit type things here you know, with a helmet and yellow, you know, the big yellow suits with a all sealed in with gaffer tape and everything. Yeah, we could all be walking around in those. No, but the masks, they're cheap. We can produce them for the thousands, we, 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 millions right. and billions and billions. You can get a pack of 100 for a tenner, and they will last you yonks, and uh, and it will help. Yes. Not stop, it will help. Exactly, yeah. And I, I don't think the government, or our government, any government has ever said they are the miracle cure, but I think that, but, you know, they have helped, and statistics kind of show that like loki fish was talking about sorry loki fish loki mars loki fish mars like like he was talking about you know statistics do show they they do actually do something sorry amy go ahead please we got <laughs> thank chat. you we yes we got a message did you want to read it honey <laughs> mass debater said long i was seeing about seven best two bucks wasted yeah <laughs> thank you so Stop much in your box <laughs> 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 uh, thank you Oh, that's good. Amy. Yeah. yeah, sorry. My hand went back up again. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right. The thing oh, is, we got Loki. Well, well sorry. So let, me, let me just finish this bit off. Because uh, what's interesting is these people are out there fighting for our freedoms. We didn't fucking ask them to. <laughs> it's like, it's like yeah. no, we don't, we don't want you to fight for us. Because we're, if there was a reason for us to fight... I guarantee you, we would all be outside Parliament. We would be bashing down Number Ten down in the street. We would be fucking fighting it. But I'm not going to to to, to thank you for basically no. going into a COVID-infested arena, all anti-mass, spreading like wild fuckers uh, on on a on a basis that is just fucking made up. Yeah. Just. Get I, uh, up, get, grow up for fuck's sake. When he said outside parliament, did anybody else like me hear Chevy Chase? Look, kids, Big Ben, parliament. Grand County nods and walks away after 10 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Loki fish. Now, something I wanted to add to the university studies and two of the university studies, the flu strain they used was a coronavirus. It was a coronavirus flu strain. Mm. So, hey. Which one? Which now one? Was, it, was, it eight, was it 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 17, 12? <laughs> 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 to got, be fair, the common, one. Is a, the common cold is a COVID strain, so... Shh, don't say yeah, that. Well, it, don't, it, don't it, say that. Don't say that. God, it's a, isn't it a corona? Cold. It's a coronavirus strain, though, isn't it? Rather than a COVID strain, isn't it? Is that isn't that the right right term to use? As yeah, that's the, the distinction. Yeah, yeah that's, that's correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't confuse the chat. They're already confused enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like I heard a thousand flurfs cry out in terror, and then suddenly silence. <laughs> <laughs> they blew up Flatardia. <laughs> fantastic. It would take a thousand if, starships. Yeah. If if you don't know the reference, fuck yourself. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> oh, I didn't know. Amy. Amy. Uh yes, please. We have a chat. When you get in toad said, I think you're cool at seven. I'm that much cooler than at 11. No, <laughs> oh, thank you so much. That's brilliant. <laughs> oh, I like that. See, that's another one of those ones. I don't know. I, I'm still waiting for the developer to get back to me, but those uh, member messages, I don't get them on that little pop-up screen. Like if I do uh, this one here from Ugly German Truths, 
I can't pop those ones up. I don't know what's going on. We're still waiting for it. We're trying. We're trying. Um, what are you going to do? I think I it's. I think it's probably got something to do with the government. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even find the button to send it. If I click to do super chats, I only have normal super chats. I, I don't seem to have a send the free one because you're a member. It's like, oh, I can't. Yeah. I know. I've been a member since it, we had memberships, and yeah. I'm not allowed to do that either. How does that even fucking work, man? Yeah. Oh, Barman, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of disappointed. You didn't say anything about the uh, the comment in the uh, Facebook thread. About, I, I was uh, going to there was a couple of people with hands up, and I thought, oh, I want to let everyone get in. I was like, ah, I'll save it to the end. But, yeah, people in pubs, you tend to be sitting down and drinks being brought to your table or – coming to a bar you're not walking around past hundreds of people you don't fecking know yeah you're not coughing at everybody at no. every moment oh i i had one talking of uh shops and things though just for the the fun of it that how people have got so relaxed as there me and wife we're in morrison's get looking at some cheese on the cheese board so yeah oh should we get that one should we get this one somebody literally leans across from me <laughs> to get the cheese i was like and this is what <laughs> yeah this is about two weeks ago so it was before masks and bits like that me and the wife are luckily wearing masks but it was like the actual fuck i yeah. just stood up and went excuse me is a word you know we just walked off that i'm not getting fucking cheese now yeah you, I'll, I'll get the pre-packaged red leicester from czechoslovakia <laughs> <laughs> that's the one <laughs> Hell, at that point, you'd take American slices. Just fuck, please yeah. get me out of here. Oh yeah, yeah. That, that's still not cheese, though. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. No, matter. it's not. It, it, it doesn't matter because that shit. That, that, that shit won't react to anything. It's perfect. That's true. I mean, they, it's they, like they, Twinkies. They, they use, It'll be they, alive with the cockroaches at the end of everything, right? <laughs> yeah, they, they, they use those on the outside of the Apollo Loon lander, uh, lander you know, just as, as protection you know, from, uh, <laughs> from radiation. <laughs> well, it doesn't melt, it. <laughs> you know. It processes cheese-like substance. Yeah. <laughs> we Up here in Canada, they label it processed cheese food. And you read yeah, that and you're just like, like what the fuck? Fuck is that even mean? It's just wrong. What cheese yeah. eats? It, it could be worse. Yeah, <laughs> I've, I've, I've seen tea in a can from America. I, I've I've seen I've seen squirty cheese from America somewhere. In a oh, that video. stuff is like, revolting. That? How how is what that about, cheese? What about squeezy cheesy peas? Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Our man <laughs> purple yeah. like peas. The tea like in cans cheese. is not from America. That's from cheesy a UK peas. manufacturer. No. What is oh. well, I'll tell can. you. I'll tell you what. I have never never seen it on the supermarket shelves here in the in, oh, the, in the UK. God no. <laughs> go nuts, you can't, it's the Americans that love it. Obviously, you can't sell canned tea to the British. <laughs> no more tea bags. Instant tea in a can. Yeah, Liquid yeah. I don't think it's. I don't think it's possible to trade opium for canned tea. It has to be grown, right? Isn't that how it works? <laughs> Just kidding, guys. Yes, and tea in a can. No, no, no. You, even me. I got a couple strikes against me, at least. I'm French Canadian and I'm an American. So, you know, no. It's, it's like, it's like, it's I like still don't drink my tea out of a can like that. No, it's I, like I selling dehydrated tea. snow to Eskimos. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, canned air or something. Yeah, <laughs> great. <laughs> I'm American, well, and I think that canned tea is gross. Yeah, that's just it's wrong. Disgusting. Oh, Woden Toad, a uh, member for six months. It, it, there's a, a really good comment. It gets worse. Velveeta. Yeah, Velveeta is a strange substance unbeknownst to anybody except the few that dare open the box. And what you find inside is akin to... You know, being in a really shitty C-grade movie and you're supposed to react as if it's the Holy Grail when you open the box. But really, you know that it's one step away from the kind of material you make underwear for prisons out of. It's fucking revolting. Well, I was going to say, Velveeta, Vel Velveeta the sound, it sounds like a feminine towel. <laughs> Velveeta is to cheese what margarine is to butter. Yeah, yeah, good one. 
Good one. You know, it's funny. Um, we've run late, and uh, just as it's pretty much time to wrap up, we've actually turned what was an assault on COVID bullshit into a pub chat. Funny how that works, eh? Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> we always you know. Evolve. Yeah, yeah. As well, that, I mean, the says, gr- I'm I'm always there with the gutter, wait, waiting for you. But you know, <laughs> <laughs> but oh, all hey, pra- hell praise to Matt tonight for his uh, out- outstanding uh, introduction to the show. And uh, I'm sorry, absolutely, Matt, that, I'm sorry, yeah. Matt, if, if we've turned it into funnies. Um, no, not at yeah, all. No, we we, we we shouldn't do. Um, but no, 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 no. no. This is that's no, no, no. Don't apologise for that because it's it's uh, it's all part of the show. It's what the show's about, so uh, it's, it's fine. I wasn't and I wasn't expecting to uh, carry on through the night anyway, so it's all good. But anyway, come to me last, Amy, if you don't mind. Absolutely, we'll do that. I'll I'll do the normal order. Dick second to last, you last. So that's perfect. So I'm going to start out with Loki Fish Mars. Loki Fish, what did you think of this evening, and what were your highlights? First, I'd like to thank Matt for speaking out. I know that that was rough. And Mm -hmm. I think you speaking out helped us let off a bit of of steam in various aspects with regards to this. I thank you. Appreciate it, mate. As far as the the bots in the chat, (laughs) the sad part is, is I don't think a lot of them are bots. I know. That's the scary part. They're just there to copy paste their and spread their garbage. I'll I'll say that I've saved that for after. Sorry. <laughs> Keep going here. <laughs> oh no, next, Keep going. Thank you. And we have DKG custom up next. What did you think of this evening and what were your highlights? Was there anything stand out to you? Mm, hi, hi, I think I think using the term highlights in this in this show is a yeah. is, is is not particularly the right term of phrase i mean obviously uh matt's story it, it takes uh absolute precedent Absolutely. in everything that went on t- and tonight and and everything that came from it was was great was great discussions and you know it, it it's just absolutely fascinating that uh unfortunately we live in a world where people are quite happy to live a lie like themselves uh, and each other's with no fucking evidence whatsoever. Like I said before, we saw it in the flat earth and it's got to this point now where people are fucking dying uh, and it's not right. And uh, fuck social media, fuck everything you've done. You should just fucking die in a ditch uh, with a badger up your ass. That's all I can say. Fuck it. Don't sugarcoat it. Tell us how you really feel. <laughs> well, in that case. Indeed. Yep, exactly. Yeah. So I think my word you word usage was the least of the problems tonight. That's good. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Then, yeah. There we go. So next up we have Linda Bertelson. Linda, what did you think of this evening? Um, I think it was a very important topic. Absolutely. And I thank Matt for bringing it. I know it was very hard. Um, and my mm-hmm. prayers are with him and his family. Absolutely. Thank you Good so shout. much. Thank that you very much. That is a perfect shout. Thank you. Appreciate, and Mike, you're next. Thank you. thank you. And Mike, you're next. <laughs> <laughs> that was almost exactly what I was going to say. It was, uh, Absolutely. Uh, thank, thank you, Matt, for sharing. And it, it was vitally important message that that you brought brought to the forefront here uh absolutely and i hope it has not gone on deaf ears thank you i agree thank you and next up we have sarcastic barman any thoughts and wrap-ups tonight really good night really poignant start and like we do with all chats i don't know why dkg is apologizing as if we don't do this all the time we're British and we make fun of things, me, DKG, even Matt got in on it. It's like, yeah, that's how we deal with stuff because we don't do therapy as much. If you're upset by something, hey. you've got to find a way to laugh at it. Knobs and titties. Knobs and titties. We, we weren't doing knobs and titties, but now you've done it. It's just I've got to do it now. Boobies. Because I haven't done it in ages. So, yeah, uh, great night. And, yeah, I really hope that some people listen to it and pay attention Absolutely. to what's going on. And 
if people want to come into the chat and talk about things, that's fine. But if all you can do is copy and paste stuff and have no actual interaction, we're not your echo chamber. Fuck off. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we've got Purple Rhymes with Orange. What are your wrap-up thoughts for the evening? Yeah, well, you know, more serious tone than usual, but uh, we're in the situation because a significant percentage of the population is not taking this seriously. That's exactly it. That's exactly it. Thank you so much. And we've got Catchin Studios up next. What What are your thoughts on this evening? I just want to also. I will also uh, thank Matt, and you know, we we send our our wishes with you. You're in our prayers. You and your family. Thank you. Um, and I think it's wonderful that we were able to address this, even if it was, you know, during pub chat when we're also, you know, it's it's full of fuckery. But we said something important too, and I, I don't know how the chat felt about that. But yeah, I, I wasn't necessarily watching it the whole time because, well, I'm here and I'm drinking, but the not bots bots not bots um were particularly obnoxious and i was having trouble keeping up with them so i want to apologize about that but otherwise um i think it was good sorry for misspeaking earlier you know because of of course it, it confuses people but yeah thanks for having me Thank you. Thank you very much. And next up, we have Mippet69. What are your thoughts on the evening? I'd just like to say, Matt, my heart's breaking. I just can't even imagine what you're going through. But there's a world of people around you. We're from everywhere, and we're sending all our love to you right now, to you and your kids. You're going to make and, me cry again. Shut up. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's just that, you know, I've got a brand new oh. little grandson and it just it really hits home to think, shit, this could happen to anyone. And I just, mm -hmm. it breaks my heart. And I'm so sorry that you're having to go through it. Thank you. Right, I'm going to shut up now. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm going to go to Dick Dawson next. Dick, what was your thoughts on the evening? Um, I grew up with a lot of British television in my life, being an auto racing fanatic and Monty Python and so on. So, Matt, that was an unbelievable heart on sleeve evening tonight. And you totally you delivered it was excellent it was it was honest heartfelt and um as everybody in the chat will i'm surely agree with me that definitely definitely falls within pub chat and that was great stuff it led to an excellent show we are all really really hoping that everything pulls through and cool in your world and you don't have to have that chat I really hope you don't, man. I really, really don't. Um, as to everybody out there watching and listening and stuff, if we have not given you a reason to fight stupidity in all its forms whenever you hear it, then we can't give you a stronger one. That's all we got. Um, Amy, uh, give it over to yourself and then give it to Matt. Yep, that's exactly what I was going to do. Thank you. First of all, I do want to shout out PJCNet in the chat. Thank you very much. You handled this with grace, and I thank you very much for that. So I do want to thank you for that as well. Okay. Yeah. Thank exactly. He did a good job. He handled it with grace, unlike the bots in the chat. I want to thank everybody for coming and I want to thank everyone in the panel for coming as well. And last of all, I do want to say, Matt, my thoughts and my heart are with you and your family. I, um, I understand basically what it's like to have to deal with that. Um, if anything is ever needed, you know where we all are. We all love you. We, you know, we wish for the best for you and your whole family. So thank you. And thank you for sharing that story that, that takes a lot. I understand that as well. So thank you very much. And now, Matt, I'm going to have you close out the show for us, please. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, wow. I mean, 
when I asked Dick that I could do this, I wasn't really wasn't sure how it would all pan out. Um, I wasn't hundred percent sure whether I'd be able to say what I say, but I wanted to say what I say because you know I could either sit around and feel sorry for myself and and uh, or maybe turn kind of the emotion that I had into something you know positive at least. Um, I mean, even if. Um, it hasn't fallen. It has fallen on deaf ears, and you know it the the right people haven't heard the message I wanted to put across, and they do get vaccinated. And perhaps somebody who's hasn't been, you know, a bit skeptical about getting the vaccine or is an anti-vaxer. Uh, you know, the conversation that we've had is is been quite important, and actually, it's ended up being, you know, something of a therapy for me. Actually, I feel. Uh, a little bit more of a weight lifted off my shoulders a little bit. It, the, the weight's still there, obviously, because, you know, it, it still could happen. Um, and, and it's a real possibility of that. But it's it's kind of put things in perspective a little bit. Um, so, yeah, it's been something of therapy, therapy for me today. So um, I feel kind of a little bit better than I did before the show. Um, and it's gone far better than I expected. I, I was kind of things are going through my mind thinking that it might end up a bit of a shit show that we might get in a row with somebody on the chat. But I think the first person that was here that we know is an anti vassa was PGC and, that, and he conducted himself with, uh, um, you know, with grace. So um, I appreciate that. But um, what I didn't want him to do was to, uh, I didn't want him to hold back as to what his opinions were because my experience as a PGC net is that um, he voices opinions, but he is usually quite respectful. Um, he doesn't hurl insults like um, a lot of conspiracists do and a lot of flat earthers do, um, and, and Globers as well. We, you know, we tend to do it as well. Um, so, no, it, it, uh, it went far better than I did, and I'm, I'm glad I did state it then because I, I was thinking that I might end up just sort of saying what I wanted to say and then disappear because before the show i really wasn't in a very good mood uh in a very good place um but you know now i feel a little better so um yeah final word please as i've said um for the people that are around you that love you the people you know, in your family your friends your loved ones for them if anything else please get vaccinated if you haven't had any vaccines at all if you've been double jabbed and you had both vaccines awesome but if you're uh if you qualify for a booster please get it boosted because you don't want to end up in the same situation where i could very well be telling my children in the next coming days or weeks that their mother is no longer around um and technically speaking though, although i do have a partner i'm essentially going to be uh, a sole parent um, you know, for my children, um, my partner myself, she, she's been an absolute, um, rock for me, uh, these last couple of days. Um, you know, she's been absolutely awesome. Uh, but you know, things, things are a little bit complicated, but, um, yeah. So please, please get vaccinated. And, uh, one final sentence I want to say, fuck COVID. <laughs>